This statue is a constant reminder that I still have not gone back to both uh, the forest or the Forbidden Woods and Dragon Roost Cavern. I was gonna say a Dragon Roost first and then the Forbidden Woods, but then it like started going turning into the Forsaken Fortress. But yeah, it's a constant reminder that we have not gone back and gotten the other two statues that you can get from those locations. Hey, what's up, my Doku's Jason? Here, welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda: The Wind Waker. Last time, we finished up on getting all of the rest, or I guess not all, but all of the rest, because that just doesn't make sense, but the rest of the, um, the rest of the reefs, as well as, you know, getting our final upgrade that we need from Great Fairies, and completing a few other, uh, Great Sea things that would net us some treasure charts, and, or I guess a treasure chart and a, uh, sea chart. This time... Well, we're going to be finally heading back to Windfall to take care of a good chunk of what's going on, or what has opened up there. However, we're going to want to make a different pit stop. This pit stop is going to be with at Mother and Child Island, because if you warp there specifically, you actually will end up inside of the island. <laughs> Tell me, little boy, can you control the wind? <laughs> so young to have such power. How did you know to find me here? I am the queen of the fairy world. What is the matter, my child? Does that not surprise you? Young one. I like you. And so I shall give you new power to the bow that you wield. We have the power of the fire and ice arrows. Ice arrows can freeze the hottest flames, and fire arrows can melt the coldest ice. The fairies in this fountain will ease your weariness. Use them as you need to. Child, I must tell you, you are just my type. <laughs> All righty. That, uh, that now gives us hold on. I need to grab a fairy, just to heal my hearts. But yeah, now that we have the fire and ice arrows, we now can take care of two-story things, but we can also go to Windfall and start cracking down on some of the side quests and stuff that has opened up there. And interestingly enough, uh, some of the stuff that we can do actually takes place at night. So we're going to go ahead and bring our bow out, actually. And then what we're wanting to do 
is we need to head up towards where the uh, where the windmill is. Because should we do so, we can actually find this guy. Fine night, isn't it? Well, would you look at that? The Ferris wheel just started moving all on its own. Somebody must have started it up. I wonder who could get that thing going on again. I don't know who it was or where he is, but he, he must be st one nice guy. Assuming, of course, he is a guy. Well, seeing as how, you, how it's finally moving again, you should go for a, a ride while you have the chance. You can use, jump into the gondola seats just around the corner from here. Trust me, little man, it's fun. So, what we are wanting to do here is now that we have the fire and ice arrows, and I keep forgetting that you can move around with these, uh, with these, but we're going to want to aim a arrow into this hole here to light a torch. So let's go ahead and time it right, and that didn't work, but you can just actually shoot the side of it and apparently that will register also. But by doing so, we actually make a transparent chest, you know, not transparent anymore. But if we actually go and talk to this guy again... Fine night, isn't it? Did you see that, little man? The light in the lighthouse has been reignited. Check out the beam of light that sweeps out uh, now, shining through the night's darkness. Seeing that brave beam light fighting the gloom has made me so happy. I just feel like giving somebody a present. So here, I'm giving this to you, little man. And we get a piece of heart. Now Windfall is going to be even more lively than before. Hooray for everything. Alrighty. That's actually very good. And now with that, uh, there is um, technically another one other thing you can do at night besides grabbing this chest. But I mean, this chest can be grabbed during the day as well. Like it's not, you know, going to disappear only during the day and you know be appear be you know not or be you know trans not transparent during the night. But let's go ahead and grab this chest real quick. Because inside will be another piece of heart. Honest to God, I forgot that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. I actively forgot that there was another piece of heart in there. I thought that was a treasure chart. But yeah, that that uh, takes care of that little side quest. However, there's one other thing we can do here, and it involves this interesting girl. Sheesh, sheesh. Take off, go away. And we are going to want to take off and go away. So basically, this is going to be a stealth, a, kind of a stealth mission, if you will. Basically, what we want to do is we want to follow this girl, but we cannot follow too closely, and we can't be seen by her. Anytime we get seen, she will... Uh, run off and we have to do this whole segment over again and there are there can be a few close calls so you're going to want to be careful so you don't want to go too far behind her as she will get farther ahead and you don't exactly know where she will be like you know now um, now I think she's like a little further ahead than where I'd want her to be so right now she's turning around and looking once she moves then we'll be able to try to you know follow her a bit more without getting seen gonna wait for her to go around the corner and then just kind of peek around here and now we're just going to want to let her do what she's doing. So then right there, just 
Kind of let her get up to the safe, and then we'll catch her in the act. You, you startled me. What do you want? My heart is racing. You scared me. Wait, are you the kind of creep who goes around at night scaring people? That's just plain mean. Just who do you think you are, anyway? A, a, a what? An, an ally of justice? I am not a thief. I swear, I haven't stolen anything. Well, yet. Please let me go. It was just an impulse, that's all. Just a bad idea. Why don't you say anything? Or why don't you say anything? Does this mean you're mad at me? Could you at least listen to the circumstances in my life that led up to this moment? Please, you owe me that much. I was once the richest little delinqu- or Is that dupundant? Or dup- Debundant. Debundant. I don't- Honest to God, I don't know how to say that word. In this town, did you know that? Well, one day a monstrous bird came and took me away for, to, to a terrible place called the Forsaken Fortress, where I was locked up and held captive. Oh, it was awful. My father spent every last rupee in his cof coffers in an attempt to get me rescued. That's right, every last bit of our family fortune, gone. That was when my life of poverty began. Now every day from morning until night I'm busy working for the open air shop. So you, as you can see, at least I'm trying to settle into my poor lifestyle. Doesn't that just tug at your heartstrings? What do you say about that tragic event in, in my pitiful life? And to make matters worse, for some reason I can't, still can't figure out that slob Maggie, who was the poorest girl in town, suddenly got filthy rich. Maggie of all people. It made me so ma makes me so mad that I want to do something terrible. Uh, do you understand my plight? Then you'll let me go? But why not? It's true. I know I'm quibbling over nothing, but being so poor weakens a, man a person's very soul. But it's time I quit making silly excuses for myself. Thank you so much. Thanks to you, I don't have to sink down to the level of a common thief. I will do. I will never do anything like that again. Ah, what an amazing feeling! I've let all my worries out of my heart. Wow, I actually feel refreshed. Let me at least thank you. Please take this, and we get our final empty bottle. Don't look at me like that. I didn't steal it. It washed up on the shore, so I picked it up. Don't tease me like that. It's a tiny bottle made of crystal clear glass. It's so beautiful. I wish my soul could be that beautiful. Oh, what am I saying? When you live in poverty, you can say the cheapest or the cheesiest things without blinking an eye. Hmm. So, um, I guess I should go soon. My father will start worrying. Goodbye, little ally of justice, and good luck to you. Bye. Thanks for tonight. So, she has now run off, and she will continue to work for Zanari. But however, I want to do something funny. If you use the Song of Passing while you're in the back of Zanari's stall, he will actually say something to you. No, no, no. You can't just walk into someone's stall like that. No, indeed. It is just... It just isn't proper. You, it just isn't done. I just realized, do we have... No, we don't, actually. Uh, I'm actually wanting to pick up something from Zanari. If we can. Yes, yes, yes. You're the young master who purchased my st sale. At last, with those funds, I was able to open my stall. But I hate to, ha to say that my poor little stall is not an instant success. In fact, it is rather deserted, I'm afraid to say. I think it's tragic turn of events. This tragic turn of events is due to the fact that I don't have a wide enough lineup of products. For, if I am to be fully honest... I only have one product. To put it another way, I th think my stall would do so much better if it, if only I could restock, or if only I could stock rare items that people can't get here in town. Yes, yes, that's what I need. Then I'm I would make plenty of money, not just plenty of money, but it would be like taking candy from many rich babies. No, 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 not even that. By running a prosperous business, I can play my part to help this town develop and become a happy place. Yes, yes, that is. That is the proper perspective. 
But dear me, if I had, if only I had a young partner to help me out, a real go-getter. Yes, 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 master. Now that I take a longer look at you, I see that you have a fine delivery bag, do you not? Dear me, it is bag fit for a hero of delivery. I have a small request, and it requires the use of that bag. Oh dear me, I knew it, young master. I knew you would understand my plight. It is a rather long-winded explanation, but please take the time to hear me out. My stall is a quite is a quite of a general st or a kind of general store that makes them its money by obtaining rare products at inexpensive prices and then selling them, with a reasonable market of markup, of course. However, because I have so few products to sell, the shop remains rather deserted. I will sell anything. I am a master of s of the sale, or of this yeah the sale. <laughs> I just need to get some new products. Could you not seek out out traveling merchants and negotiate supply contracts with them for me? No, no, no. Do not look so frightened. I say contracts, but it is just a word. You do not have to do anything very difficult. All you need to do is to trade one of my products for a new product that is that the merchants have is in stock. You see, among merchants, a trade is proof of a contract. That is to say, it is the merchant's oath. That is what we call it. Yes, yes. Merchants that have sworn a merchant's oath will afterwards send their products to me. It is the way things work. So, as you succeed in trading my products, my product lineup will increase. Do you understand everything I've told you? Yes, yes, young master. You are now new sal my new salesman. No, no, scratch that. Starting today, you and I are partners. Deary me, yes. I give it. I give to you my proof of contract. In other words, this is my merchant's oath. Take it with you, my young partner. We get a town flower. The first thing you need to do is to take this to another traveling merchant and trade it for something to build on the foundation of my merchant's oath. As soon as you trade, the merchant you traded with will send his products to my shop, thereby, thereby increasing my product line, which will make me quite happy. Well, your new, tr your new trading partners, the trading mer or the traveling merchants, are waiting for you somewhere out there on the great sea. My dear, my expectations are high. Yep. So that is starts a lengthy side quest known as, I guess, the. Uh, Zanari shop quest or the traveling merchants quest basically we are going to be trading a bunch of stuff to get or to help Zanari make his shop bigger and more successful however we're not going to be taking care of that this episode personally but we will be taking care of that very very soon for the time being though I actually wanted to come in here and I want to actually talk to, um, talk to Lenzo. Because I want, I don't, well, I didn't want to show him then. I thought, I thought we'd get a more powerful, uh. Yeah, I thought we'd get a more powerful, um, a more powerful, th um, little prize if we showed him our uh show him our picto box but i guess that's not here i thought we'd get a legendary picto box but i guess not unless the legendary picto box is you know locked behind getting a forest firefly like the original came would do for the deluxe picto box i don't know anyway our next task that I want to take care of here, it's actually I think one of the last tasks that we can do at the very moment, is actually here with uh, Maggie and her father. You there, halt! Oh, you are so just some wretched street urchin. I thought you were the postman. Be thankful, because if you were the postman, I would have shooed you out of here because you could, you could say before you could say boo. But say, you look rather familiar for a street urchin. Have we perhaps met before someplace? Oh uh, yeah, you gripe to me about your daughter. But okay, so this is the guy that we need to give 
uh, skull necklaces too. Oh, this is one of those skull necklaces that my daughter Maggie brought back from the Forsaken Fortress. These qu sell qu quite well at antique shops. In fact, it was thanks to these beauties that I became so filthy rich overnight. Eh? And from the looks of it, I'd say you have about 20 of these, don't you? They aren't easy to come by, either. Frankly, I'm amazed you found so many. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be bathing in money yet again. The money bath. The only bath that gets you filthy, filthy rich. Alright, boy. I'll give you this as a tip. Now, I'm not thanking you or anything. I'm just feeling good today. And we get a treasure chart. I was once quite poor myself, you know. Back then I used to dream of owning a boat. A boat I could use to go off in search of treasure. And now look at my filthy riches. Chase your dreams, little urgent. Now, of course, since we have four more, if we show him the rest of them, he will actually give us a 20 rupee tip. And if you go higher, like if you have a certain higher amount of them, you will actually go up to 40, and I think maybe 40 is the limit, but I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk to Maggie. Oh, to think I would have survived, I would survive an ordeal and return to this town. And to think that I would ever be able to live in such a beautiful, imp impulent house. It's like a dream come true. But no, no, it's a nightmare. Without him by my side, it's like a rainstorm rages in my heart. It was so, He was so kind to me in the Forsaken Fortress, that sweet boy who gave me, gave me all those expensive necklaces when I fled from that cursed island. Just hearing his name lifts my spirits. Mo, the wonderful moblin from the Forsaken Fortress. Oh, Mo, why Mo? I'm always writing heartfelt letters filled with my overflowing emotions, but why don't you answer me, Mo? Ugh. This is bad, oh terribly bad. I've already drifted off into my own dream world. Oh, by the way, I have a request for you. Could you take the letter I just finished inking and deliver it to the post box for me? Please, I beg of you. What? Really? You're such a dear. You've made Maggie so happy. Alright, we get Maggie's letter. The post box, don't you dare forget. But you must promise not to read it. The secrets of my of a girl's heart are to be shared only when she so de desires. Um, alrighty. Well, I don't think we can read it anyway. Because, you know, if we actually grab it out of our delivery bag and... Lift it into the air. Like, taking this out here won't do anything, so we can't actually read it. It's not like Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, where if you read the, uh, read the Ghost Toads, um, book in Chapter 6, you actually die. But, anyway, let's go ahead and put it into the post box. And now it will require a postage of, I guess, a postage send of 5 rupees. And now what I want to do is just go ahead and we're just going to ch change it to the next day. Honestly, you just don't understand, do you? Open up your ears. Yeah. Silence! I'm telling you, you won't. we don't allow postmen here. Be gone, be gone. Don't be ridiculous. I went through great trials and tribulations to go all the way to the Forsaken Fortress and return with Mo's letter. Silence, begone, begone. Then please be reasonable. Can you at least sign for the letter? Silence, begone, begone. Just acknowledge I was here. Yeah. Silence, begone, begone. Ugh, foolish man. Now you've made me angry. I cannot even look you in the face any longer. Or I might fear I might. I must go somewhere to cool my feathers. Well, what a wretched or un unruly postman. I don't know anything about him, any Mr. Mo in any Forsaken Fortress, and yet he always comes here bringing his letters. Does this Mo think I will let him lay a hand on my one and only daughter, Maggie? I don't care whose letters they are. They'll never reach her on my watch. Well... 
can't do anything here, so I say we go talk to that postman and see, you know, if there's anything we can do for him, because he seemed pretty upset by this, uh, by this, you know, Maggie's father being kind of an ass to him. And we will actually find this postman in the cafe. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry you had to witness me fly off the handle like that over at Maggie's house. I'm most embarrassed. That man just... Never mind. Tell you, to tell you the truth, though, I came to deliver a letter addressed to Maggie from a moblin named Mo. But as you saw, the girl's stubborn father won't permit me to give it to her. What a stubborn, meddling old man. Refusing to accept letters from the postman? Who's heard of such nonsense? I went to great trouble to go all the way to the Forsaken Fortress, and it was a most frightening ordeal, let me tell you. If I don't deliver this letter, then I am a failure of the delivery trade. But, I have other deliveries waiting to be made. I cannot mope here forever. Actually, though, I have an idea. That old man may not permit postmen on his premises, but surely he would allow you to the place, would he not? Could, he deliver, could you deliver this letter to Maggie in my stead? What do you say? Honestly, you young man are a lifesaver. It truly never hurts to ask. I shall leave this letter in your care. All right, we get Moe's or Mo, the Moblin's letter, which you know Moe's letter. I'm counting on you to put this in Maggie's hands, and I thank you. All right, well, let's go ahead and I guess put it in our inventory and let's head back over to Maggie's. Alrighty, now we'll just sneak around her father and go ahead and come bring her the letter. Is is that could it be the letter from Mo that I saw in my dreams? Let me read it this instant. Um This is Mo. I like you, Maggie, so much that I want to eat you for dinner. Did you hear that? Those words? This means, I mean, it must mean, can it be? This is his marriage proposal? It must be. At last my feelings have been conveyed to Mo. At last he understands how I feel. This is the happiest day of my life. True de do de lu la la. From here on out, today will be the anniversary of the of true love for me and Mo. Oh, it completely slipped my mind. I must thank you for your role in this. To commemorate my anniversary of true love, I give you this. We get another piece of heart. <laughs> Trudy Lulu, treasure it always. And that's gonna be it for, you know, the adventures of Mo and Maggie. Yeah. As I guess they're going to, you know, be in love. Oh wow, I actually never knew you could jump on the chandelier. It's actually pretty, quite interesting. Alright, so. Now that we are done here. We've basically done everything. I'm actually going to go ahead and go into the potion shop just real quick. Because I want to check to see if it is going to be 15 in order for him to brew up the new potion. Or if, it is, or if we can take 10 to him. Gasp, is that... Could it possibly be? Did you by chance bring me chew jelly? Um, this is pretty rare color of chew jelly. Perhaps it didn't create a new breed. Particular chews. Inspiration. Whoa, for a second there I thought there were, we were all square, but it seems quite clear that you don't have enough. Okay, so yeah, he does need 15. So we need five more uh, blue chews in order to, you know, actually be able to have him make something. But with that... That basically takes care of everything on Windfall. There are a few things that are left on the island to take care of, but we can't actually take care of them without taking care of, you know, a few other things. So, with that, next time in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, we're going to take to the Great Seas as we start one of the longest side quests in the game. And Link just stares at the King of Red Lions. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. Troops out a ton. Make sure to subscribe to the if you have not already. And 
I will see you guys all later.